and welcome back to B2B Marketing Forum, the live version, CML Talks. And again, if you have questions, hashtag CML Talks. And right now, in this whole world of engagement marketing, right here, the topic today, I'm together with Vincent Hoplot. You are the marketing director of Robeco. That's great. And Todd uh, Wheatland. It's a challenge for everyone. <laughs> Go with it. Todd. Yeah. Todd, Todd from Australia. And you are the VP of Marketing and Thought Leadership of Kelly Services. That's true. Globally. Mm -hmm. Nice. So welcome. Uh, and right now, I think it's, well, this is my personal opinion, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on it, uh, a journey to make engagement with the customer really possible. You need content. Now, if you're a small butcher shop in a local area, it might be easy to have your content ready. But what if, let's say, in your world, Let's say you are an international, large organization. What are the key challenges? If I'm a CMO and I have content marketing, as I know is a, is a must enabler to make the journey happen, what are the key challenges from an international perspective? Yeah, I can take the question. Um, so uh, you can fill me in uh, as well. The thing is that if you look at uh, content management and getting it on the agenda, that's the first thing that you actually have to deal with. Uh, because what I see is that often companies, you know, they are busy with uh, sales, sales and more sales, which is good, by the way. At the end of the day, they forget to look at the long term. So they forget to look into the company to find out what, where the gems are that the company can use yeah. actually to differentiate about itself. about gems, and while you say gems, there's a sizzling sound from the kitchen <laughs> to create more of the tension. But can yeah. you uh, say, uh, repeat that uh, second part, so, the long term? Yeah, so the thing is, that at the end of the day, I strongly believe that you have to build long term interaction with clients. And clients yeah. are not stupid. They are looking for real stuff. They are not looking for a quick banner or a quick uh, tweet, they are looking yeah. for real content. And what, and what makes it difficult to deliver that content uh, across different, not only target audiences, but yeah. also different countries and cultures? There are many things, uh, to be fairly honest, there are many things that makes it difficult. It begins with geographies, the fact that the people who produce the content, the smart people that we have, they are scattered across the globe. Yeah. So that's one thing, to so get them aligned, to give them an, uh, an idea what the content that we want from them, where it's going to be in uh, the next couple of months, so which clients are going to see what. So that's one of the challenges. The other one is that at the end of the day, we have clients across the globe as well. So you have to first to you, you, you actually get the content from across the globe, and then you have to distribute it to the same regions again. And it has to go through this process. In our case, wow. through the head office. So it makes it makes it quite difficult. It's a lot of communication. It's a lot of communication. Back all the information across. Absolutely. And, uh, and then Absolutely. You have to deal with people. So at the end of the day, people are the, yeah. what makes well, it how, tick. How many countries are you then involved in yourself? Yeah, I, I tend to talk about regions because at the end of the day, we, yeah. So for us, it's like um, uh, Asia and Australia. It is uh, Middle East, uh, the U.S., Europe. And the Netherlands for us, because we are big in the Netherlands, is yeah. a specific area as well. But also Latin, so it, it's, it's quite yeah. uh, diverse. Yeah, yeah. And how's it working for you? Uh, yeah, it's, look, it's, it's a challenge regardless of how we position this, right? I think there's, there's three key pieces to, to this puzzle, that, the, the way I see it. We have how, what, what is the topic? So what, what are you trying to be known for? And is that, is that something that has a particularly unifying theme or approach globally. Uh, for example, a particular trend may be recognized as US-centric. So therefore, there might even be a credibility of proactively communicating that with a US flavor. It may yeah. actually bring credibility in a local market that a localized approach may not have. The ability to quickly respond to local events and the local or developments. In, or trends. introduce new concepts, for example. Yeah. If you're trying to, uh, you know, if you're trying to claim a full leadership position early on, then bringing trends in from other parts of the world into a region or a country can be there. Yeah. So it's finding that mix, and though obviously they're the great topics because they can stay. Uh, what you can also do is uh, focus on what are the cultural aspects of that. So there's, you know, the country, the, the, the language issues, very difficult to scale intelligently um, with, yeah. uh, with languages. One of the things, one of the shortcuts we were discussing earlier that we do is we, rather than take a thought leadership piece and translate it into 30 languages, and try to uh, uh, insincerely indicate that someone other than the real author was the author, we will um, preface, we will basically get a feedback position from a local lead person in that country, and that person will then reflect on their thoughts and their, their opinions on this original piece. So oh, wow. we, we, we take a... The best of both worlds. Uh, I, 
I, I'd, I'd like to think it works. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the, and the third piece, something that is, is true a lot with the type of um, medium we're using today, webcasting or video casting, that really is a challenge for uh, when you're trying to position things globally. So we oh. certainly time in when can you release something that's going to be suitable for an Asian audience, a, a, a US audience, and a Central European audience. So how can you uh, both take the themes and the topics that are most relevant, but also position it and frame it in a way that is very accessible and the right time and the right place for that purpose? Yeah. So it sounds like that you found a way or quick wins as a sort of a solution to overcome these challenges. I'd say we're constantly yeah. struggling with the challenge. I think yeah. there's some there's some best practices that we found internally that work to enable us to move at scale. But I think we're still a long way from it. I think what it will continue. What so difficult? What is it really? What's the uh, maybe one thing about making yeah. it difficult? The funny thing is that you just mentioned quick win program. You said something about quick win. I can tell you one thing about the uh, content. Quick. It is not <laughs> quick win. So I don't, you know, there are always small things that you can do, but at the end of the day, to really get this content in a very structured way out there and to make it relevant and you know, really have these conversations which are tailored to the different target groups, uh, notwithstanding the fact that you also have to think about languages, cultural differences and so on and so forth, makes it inherent that it cannot be quick win. Yeah. So it's hard work and that's one of the funny things. I think I tend to say that marketeers, they shy away of hard work, yeah. but this is really hard work. So the so, new marketeer, is, uh, is one that uh, says, okay, I'm ready to yeah. put some hard effort in. Yeah, it's, it's maybe difficult to say here in Amsterdam, but it's a Rotterdam approach that you need. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. hear that. Yeah, you didn't hear that, no, I can guess. I can guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so hard work, and what makes it really, what makes it so hard work? What is different today from maybe a few years ago? Is it just because there's Twitter and Facebook and some social no. channels? Is, is that the only thing? Or is no, I think, I think basically, uh, I think it's more about, uh, it's about more than challenges, uh, or, or channels, I mean. Because the thing is that um, what you have nowadays is a lot of clutter, commoditization, globalization. So, you know, everybody is everywhere. So you compete with everybody everywhere. And everybody's trying to outsmart each, outsmart each other. So at the end of the day, that makes it difficult. So it's 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 really difficult to make a relevant message, well timed to the right target audience, and really get it out. And not once, but again and again and again. So yeah. having these interactions and conversations. And I would argue that, um, like said before, if you look at social media, social media is making it even more complex because at the end of the day, how many conversations can a company have? So yeah. it is it is a and very also challenging. Get learning from it. Absolutely. It's probably also and and achieve perfect. it without 140 yeah. Facebook profile pages. Yeah. So how do you, how do you reconcile a, uh, a a local approach with a, a global presence? Yet still deliver value that's that's uh, that's that speaks to a local audience. Yeah. So you're uh, also a VP of uh, thought leadership internally. Um, what kind of uh, evangelization? Does it require uh, for a CMO internally to get other people on board of uh, the vision that you have, or is it something that you spoke earlier about in the right message, to the right place, right, and everybody's trying to smart you? Let's say you're a CMO that understands it and says, "Okay, I'm going to be on this journey." Is it difficult to get people internally on board on that journey? From from my personal experience, absolutely not. I think there's there's so much scope in working with content and its measurability in an online environment. Yeah. Uh, both anecdotal activity and lead type um, metrics that yeah. uh, it really is a very clear, certainly yeah. in my experience. It's the really raw cool. data that you can prove what you it's, know, it's uh, uh, it, This isn't marketing fuzziness. You know, you, you can inflate your number of Twitter followers, you can buy Facebook friends, you can, you can do lots of things to make the, met, the, the activity metrics look interesting yeah. and appealing and promote yourself or, or uh, no. manipulate those numbers. No. What you can't manipulate is genuine engagement, which yeah. results in leads and closes sales. That's the sort of that's the sort of no. metric flow through that with lead nurturing is very viable and and measurable in this environment. Yeah, I agree, agree fully because you know we see the same. Uh, in our, I would argue that in our company it is it's a bit more difficult because we are a company who is really you know knowledge based. So we're an investment management business, which means that you actually at the end of the day, the investment managers are the core of the company. And uh, you know they tend to be extremely focused on delivering uh, performance, which is their core task. Yeah. Um, so that makes it difficult because at the end of the day, if somebody is being incentivized to really to create performance, and everything that keeps him takes him away from that core task uh, is being seen as something that's 
actually an intervention in their core um, um, goals that they want to achieve. That makes it difficult for us. So at the end of the day, we really had to make that big step to get the topic on the agenda and to make it relevant for them and to show them how it could uh, add value. So we really had to take this step to, to, to make it a relevant topic within the company. So mm -hmm. luckily we succeeded and here we are basically. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah. Just uh, a little question on the side. If you're a private banker, uh, is it difficult to have the transparent, uh, in, true engagement in a public arena? I think it's, I don't know if it's difficult. I would argue that it's not difficult. Because at the end of the day, I think conversations have to be authentic. So uh, you shouldn't think of compliance all the time. Yeah. You should really have authentic com uh, you know, communication with each other. And based on that, if you have that as the point of departure, I don't believe that it, is, it becomes a res uh, restriction. Nice. So I think we can have open conversations. A final tip, uh, we got, we got to close it up. Yeah. Uh, a final tip for if I'm a marketing director globally and I have a small team, I don't have a lot of resources, but I know I have to address right messages to the right audience and multiple channels, etc., etc. What is, would your main advice be? My advice would be focus. It's free, so be careful. Yeah, my advice would be focus. Focus. Because I, I, I think it doesn't matter whether you're a small company or a big company, it's always too much to handle. So at the end yeah. of the day, you will have to focus, you know, okay. zoom in on the right things that will deliver value. And that's basically what you should go for. Focus. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I, I can, you know. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would add that I think that, no, let's, let's stick with focus. We'll wrap on that. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, in the world of focus, what, uh, what would your advice be? If I'm a CMO, and it's okay, thank you for your tip. I'm going to use focus, and I'm, I have this international content creation um, strategy, mm -hmm. and I know I need to focus. Yeah. Content works when you understand your audience and you're delivering value to educate and inform yeah. that audience. That is very difficult to sustain from a central position if you're trying to globalize that knowledge. You yeah. have to find some sort of connection at, a, at, a, at a, that local level where you're trying to make meaning for your, that audience. Uh, so the focus point is how do you how do you determine those topics which can be, be um, delivered at scale to that audience with meaning, in, with the least possible amount of effort. That's that's how you, that's how we have to try scale things. If you're producing yeah. thousands of pieces of content a year, hundreds a week, or whatever you're doing, then you've really got to be able to move at speed, at volume, and you have to choose those topics where that will resonate the furthest, rather than just speaking to a lowest common denom denominator in a single country. Nice. Oh. Thank you uh, for all your insights. And if I have time, I'll travel around the world and see if I'm engaged in a different way, <laughs> in a different situation. But first, I have, I have a lot of money to yeah. invest in, in your. Uh, <laughs> You're welcome to, to do so. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Thanks Thank you very much. Enjoy today. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.